Good morning. Your brain is the most important organ in your body. So how often do you think about how you feed it? I'm not going to talk to you about the what today as much as the why and the how you feed your brain. I could tell you that sugar is slowly clogging the vessels that lead to your brain, your heart, your kidneys, your fingers, your toes, your genitals, that 80% of people that have Alzheimer's also have type 2 diabetes, that your brain is made up of the fats that you've been eating for the last seven years, and even small amounts of artificial fats in your brain will significantly increase your risk of Alzheimer's disease, that just 10 minutes of meditation could immediately increase your concentration, or a 20-minute walk would significantly improve your performance on a test. I could tell you that sugar and stress will shrink the hippocampus, the learning center of your brain, and that just a little bit of regular exercise will actually cause that same part of your brain to grow. That the amygdala, the part of your brain that overreacts to emotional stress, will actually shrink with regular yoga practice. Or that a 30-minute walk outside every day is as effective as Prozac in reducing your depression. I could tell you that a brain scan of a stressed brain and an Alzheimer's brain look very similar. I could tell you that small daily challenges actually help us build new neural pathways, but when we're chronically stressed, we actually lose the ability to regenerate new brain cells. That habits like smoking, binge drinking, and obesity are significantly passed along in your social circles, but Good habits are not. I could tell you that CEOs of company, companies like Tupperware, Monsanto, Panda Express, and Pipeline all incorporate daily meditation as part of their personal and professional practice because they know that performance improves. They know that net sales go up, productivity goes up, and sick days go down. But we don't change because we know we should. So why do we change? What makes us decide that today is the day? What if I told you we should change the way we think about our health, that we should start thinking about taking care of our brains, because that's what's making the decisions for us anyway. Most of our decisions are compulsive, impulsive, or just for comfort. Compulsive thoughts are circular thoughts that happen when our serotonin is low. Think about the last time you thought about ice cream in your freezer 152 times before you finally got up and ate the ice cream. That's a compulsive thought. Impulsive behaviors are uh, thoughtless actions that happen when our dopamine is low. Think about the last time you were so full you said you would never eat again, and then you walked by a candy dish, grabbed a handful, and ate it anyway. That's an impulsive behavior. Some of our behaviors are just for comforting loneliness. When oxytocin, our bonding hormone, is low, we do things to comfort ourselves because we feel sad. So we need to be changing the way we feed our brains so that we can make better decisions. Our brains need regular blood flow. Our brains need B vitamins from real food. Our brains need oxygen. They need connections with about 20 people in your life. Your brains need healthy, balanced blood sugar. This is so important. Your brains need focused purpose. When we want to make lasting decisions, those decisions don't come from reading health articles in magazines. They come from dreams, from purpose, from social connection. That's what makes us change. All of these decisions are controlled by our serotonin, our dopamine, and our oxytocin. Dopamine drives the reward center of our brain. Dopamine is the chemical that goes up when we think something ple pleasurable might happen. When dopamine is low, we feel unfocused, irritable, angry, and we're significantly less productive. It makes us overconsume things like sugar, alcohol, overengage with devices. This is huge. 
It makes us enjoy taking risks and overconsume stimulating substances. Sugar intake eventually blunts dopamine response just like cocaine. So when people overconsume sugar, they need more and more to get that same response just like a drug addiction. I find it incredibly alarming that people aren't recognizing that your device use and your children's device use is doing this exact same thing to your brain. Our, de our desire for novelty makes us overconsume more and more and more. And it's harmful for your brain. We see evidence of this every day. 75% of people experience significant anxiety if you take their device away from them, which we do in Pipeline. Um, so it's really important to understand that, that this part of your brain that a lot of you entrepreneurs really have, um, that, that has that drive for novelty, it has a purpose. This part of our brain helps us to focus on new things that we want and go after it with everything we have. So why do we waste it on impulses? Why do we waste it on things that are bad for us? Why don't we use it to propel us forward to go after what we want with everything we have? Because you can. All it takes to bring dopamine up naturally is to think about something that you want and think about it every day. That's it. That's what brings our dopamine up. That's what it's for. And it could be something deep and meaningful, but it doesn't even have to be. You just have to want it. And you have to want it and think about it all the time. So I would encourage you, what you can pass along in your social circle is you can ask the people on your team, you can ask the people that you love, what do you want more than anything? You can talk to them about it, strategize with them, visualize, journal, read about it, listen to podcasts, think about it every day, think about what you want every day more than anything. Make that your purpose. We don't all need Wellbutrin and cocaine to get our dopamine levels up. We just need to think about what we want and focus on it all the time. Then we wouldn't reach for the things that shrink our brains. Then we would grow our brains, we would take care of ourselves because we need these brains to do the things that we can do. All of you in this room have incredible things you can do. Take care of your brains so you can do it. Serotonin is also a big controller of our behavior. Serotonin is a chemical that helps us feel like we matter in a group, that we have purpose. Without it, we feel hopeless. Our motivation gets low. We feel irritable. We feel insecure and like we're never enough. But what if we have more control over that than we think? I want you to visualize the last time you did something truly incredible. Think about what that felt like for you. Visualize the last time you did something that really mattered to somebody that you love. Think about their face. Think about what that meant. I want you to visualize the last time you were part of a group who really appreciated you and knew that you were important. What did that feel like? Just those thoughts are raising your serotonin right now. Basic things like going out in the sun, eating fish or taking fish oil, going for walks outside. These are the things that naturally make serotonin go up. We have control over these things. So what if the next time you're feeling down, you put down the ice cream, go for a walk with somebody who appreciates you, talk about the things that you're excited about, talk about what you wanna do with your life, talk about your purpose, talk about what means something to you. I want you to ask yourself, what am I spending my time and attention on? What am I putting my focus on? Ask yourself, what matters the most to me? And is there a disconnect? Because if there is, that's where those impulsive, compulsive, and loneliness decisions come from. That's what makes you reach for the things that are bad for you even when you know that you shouldn't do it. When we stay focused on we matter, why we matter, the compulsive, impulsive, and comfort decisions fade. And we start to make decisions that support our purpose. 
Oxytocin is our bonding hormone. This is an interesting hormone because it's just the hormone that makes us feel connected and loved. What's great about this hormone is that it actually stabilizes the serotonin and dopamine systems in your brain, which are really the only chemicals that make you happy. So when oxytocin is normal, we feel connected. When it's low, we feel lonely, isolated, depressed, unstable. And we start making decisions to comfort our loneliness, but it doesn't have to be that way. All we need to keep normal oxytocin levels is eight hugs a day, or one 20-second hug with someone that matters to you to change the chemistry in your brain, to stabilize those parts of your brain that, that make us feel happy, that make us feel connected. This is what helps us make better decisions. And you don't even have to get it from hugs. You can get it from looking at things like puppies and cute babies. You can get it from volunteering. You can get it from get, giving gifts. But when our oxytocin is high, our bonding is high, it stabilizes the rest of our system. So some of us busy people don't prioritize bonding in our lives, but this is actually an important part of normal brain function. I want you to remember that your brain is the most irreplaceable part of your purpose. It's the most irreplaceable part of your company, of your dream, of your meaning. You have to take care of it. If you don't take care of that brain, you can't delegate it. Stop feeding your brain with mindless news feeds and with sugar. Start feeding your brain with purpose, with healthy thoughts, healthy decisions. Healthy decisions come from focused purpose from doing the right things even when it's hard, for paying attention to what means something to you even when you run into challenges. When we do that, it makes it a lot easier to implement the things that we do in the pipeline program. We make people move. We make people get blood flow to their brain. We make sure they eat about 120 grams of carbs in a day so that they have optimal brain function while they're working hard all day. And we make them put their devices down and when they need a break, just pause instead of looking at the phone. So I want you to remember to ask yourself, why do I matter? What drives me? Who do I need to stay connected to? This is what makes us make healthy decisions. If you need a little reminder, I want you to take a little marker and write on your rear view mirror, this is it. This is it. My life is not what I didn't get done yesterday. My life isn't what I have to do next week. My life doesn't start an hour from now. My life is right here, right now. This is it. This is the moment when I decide who I want to be and who I want to become. And if I'm making decisions that take care of my brain so that I can actually do what I care about, this is it. This is your moment right now to decide if you're going to take care of that brain so you can do what you love. I just want to say that I am the newest member of the Pipeline team, and it has been an incredible experience to work with an organization that values this as part of their program. It's been amazing to watch the fellows grow personally and professionally and develop themselves over the last year. And I would encourage you, even if you're not part of this organization, to think about the value of incorporating some of these ideas into your life or into your organization. And if you are part of Pipeline, I just want to tell you that I am beyond excited to see what you do with everything you've learned here in the last year. That you're going to do amazing things. And you have truly been an inspiration to me. So thank you so much for that.